In the last lesson, we saw that uh, every raga is associated, can be uh, captured at a very fundamental level uh, with a scale of ascending and descending swaras called the aroha and avaroha. And I again to emphasize that it is just the skeleton of the raga. Now, how do we flesh out the raga? Uh, what are some of the can be called the design aspects? Uh, of raga as it were. Now, some of these are that you know, though of course, uh, some notes in the raga have to be highlighted and uh, relative to other notes. There are some swaras on which phrases may end and other swaras on which they may not end. Some swaras on which, uh, from which phrases begin. So, in this uh, and the next video, we will look at these aspects. So, now when a, a raga includes a set of notes, every one of those notes is critical, right? It has to be included, and other notes have to be kept out. It is not up to um, the creative musician's whim, or um, it is not up to a musician to say that I will skip one note or use another note then you are not uh, performing uh, Hindustani music. Sa, so, if it is boo, Sa, Sa, Di, Ga, Pa, Da, Pa, Ga, Re, Da, Sa, you have to use all the notes. Um, you can't say that I am going to try and sing boo, boo without the Gandhara or without the Devat, you can't do it. Um, nor can you say, let me try to bring in another note. So, that sort of thing is not uh, allowed, right? That is that's very fundamental. Of course, if you are using boop to create a film song or a bhajan, then that is up to you. But when you are singing boop as a in khayal or dhrupad, then that is a freedom you do not have. But um, though every note, as I said, is critical, you have to use it. Some notes are uh, to be highlighted. The, typically, we, we talk of two swaras. Every raga, we identify two swaras. Um, in, in every raga, there are two swaras which have to be highlighted. The, the most important swara and the next important swara. So, we, and these are called vadi and samvadi. These are called vadi and samvadi. This is the most important or it has to be highlighted. This is next in importance. We have certain parameters which are used in a standard description of raga. The first of course is aroha vroha and then comes vadi samvadi. Amongst these swaras which is the most important and which is the swara that is next in importance. In the case of bhup for instance it is ga and dha. Um, again yaman. Uh, Ga and Ni, Gandhara and Nishan. So, uh, Yaman has a scale of, the scale of Yaman is this. Sa, Sa, Dhi, Ga, Ma, Pad, Ni, Sa, Sa, Ni, Da, Pa, Ma, Ga, Di, Sa. This is the scale. But when we sing Yaman, it's Ga, Di, Ni, Da, Ni, Di, Ga. The Gandhar is highlighted constantly.
so ga and ni are vadi samvadi for yaman and if you listen to some of the many compositions in yaman will bear it out uh, they will typically highlight the ga you will we will see later on the composition if a composition in khayal especially we have uh, what is called the mukhda the first part of the the first uh, part of the composition which lands on the first beat of the cycle and that is the refrain basically and that we uh, that typically very often in many compositions uh, is on ga for instance ye re ali piya bin so ni pare sa gare ga so ganga is highlighted again ha ye re milana tu hai ga ga ni re pa ga ma re ga aur ma ma wa ri wa ri jaungi again ga aur sukhadaata ya sukhadaata sabana ke shankar sukhadaata so we have a wide variety of compositions and very often you find typically you know in yaman the composition will highlight the gandhara right in the beginning no vadi and samvadi again they are uh, concepts that are found in medieval treatises onwards um even earlier uh, from the 8th century onwards itself um and they are actually part of a quartet this uh, a quartet of concepts which is vadi samvadi um so vadi samvadi anuvadi vivadi this is an ancient uh, quartet of concepts and uh, these are con- they continue to be relevant there uh, you know in the context of a raga a vadi is uh, compared to the king of a realm and uh, the samvadi is the is is compared to the minister who assists the king right the king it is the king's realm right he dominates over the realm and he rules the the kingdom and so also the vadi swara is it, it it dominates over the raga and uh, the minister the samvadi is supposed to assist the king right and so the samvadi assists the vadi swara and who are these the rest of the subjects who who go along with the king you know strengthening his will uh, and letting him lead the way but vivadi is the enemy of the state and should not be permitted into the uh, realm into the kingdom into the raga this uh, this is a verse in sangeeta makaranda vaadi swarastu raja vaadi swarastu raja syan mantri samvadi ruchyate swaro vivadi vairi syad anuvadi cha bhrityavat um this is sangeeta makaranda of narada so as i said vaadi samvadi are Uh, so, you know very uh, are part of standard descriptions of raga um so yaman as i said would be described as it has all the shuddha swaras except madhyam which is tivra and the gandhar ga is the vadi and shni is the samvadi this would be a very preliminary description of yaman we have another uh, set of uh, concepts which also have to do with the strength of swaras but they are not it's not the identical concept you know we have this concept of alpatva alpa means less right small bahu is more in ragas there are some swaras uh, sometimes you know which are supposed to have be very less their presence is very 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 diminished very less we, i wouldn't say weak weak gives another idea they are important that weak pres- that that, that diminished presence of that swara is important it's not weak but it is diminished bahu is of course more so vadi and samvadi will will of course have bahutva right they will 
uh, occur very frequently in the Raga exposition. But that does not mean that the other Swaras, so in Yamanga, in Niya, Vadi and Samadhi, that does not mean Ridha or Pa and Sa are therefore Alpa or they are, they are diminished. No, in a Raga like Yaman, uh, every Swara has uh, Bahutva in the sense every swara has a can be highlighted but of course not at the expense of vadi and samadhi vadi and samadhi relatively they should be more uh, dominant but it doesn't mean that re has a has a diminished presence or uh, it is weak but in a rag like bihag sa ni sa ga ma a ni sa this is the arrow sa ni so the dha is there. Saini da pa. You can't. This will destroy Bihar. The dha is just a, a flicker, and that flicker is important. It's critical. Paga maga sa. The re also. Paga ma pa Gama pa ma ga re sa. The re, the re and the dha are, they have alpatwa, a flicker of it. When we come from sa, from ni to pa, the dha is a flicker. Again, from ga to sa, the re is a flicker. And that is that flicker is important. No more, no less. And that is. Re and uh, the re and the dha are supposed to have alpatva in Bihag. So, um, in uh, medieval uh, descriptions of raga, we have this concept of amsha, which is uh, the same as the vadi. Amsha is supposed to be the most important swara in the raga, and that is what we speak of as the vadi. We also have uh, references to categories of graha and nyasa in the uh, ancient treatises. So, Amsha which is equal, which is equivalent to the concept of Vadi, we also have this Graha and Nyasa. These are all categories found in medieval texts onwards and they continue to be of uh, significance. Graha is a, um, the Swara on which phrases may begin, right, in, in contemporary music that is uh, we, we describe graha as the swara or the, or the notes that there, there are a few notes on which phrases may begin. There are some notes on which they may not begin. Right? So again, to take bihag, um, though typically phrases would be, begin with ni and ga. Sa ni sa ga ma ga ni pa ni sa pa ga ma. That is more rare. Sa, sa, ni sa ma ga, ni sa ga ma pa ga ma ga, sa ga ma pa ni sa. This is not that appropriate. It's not, you know, it won't be. It's not a crime to sing it, but the better way is to start the phrase on me. Again, Gama Pani Sani Pa. That is better than Ma Pani Sa. This is almost uh, not, doesn't sound right. Ma Pani Sa. Though, you know, because it's part of the arrow, it, uh, it should be all right, but doesn't really bring out the flavor of the rag. You have to start on ga or ni, preferably or pa. Not so much on sa and ma. Those are not preferred uh, graha swaras, swaras on which the uh, phrases may begin. And nyasa swara is uh, uh, also a very important category where phrases may end. So, nyasa is where because it's where phrases end, typically that note would be highlighted, right? Because uh, when you 
uh, rather than the note on which you begin phrases because that's just uh, going to be the beginning of the phrase but where you end that is going to highlight that swara so nyasa swara and um, vadi are sometimes quite the same um, but again the concepts are different um, we have this um, two ragas which are quite uh, different but they sound very alike you know, tilaka more than these they have a lot in common but one of the very important different distinguishing uh, features is this nyasa swara so tilaka mood uh, the nyasa swara is often the sa after the prominent ga right pa ni sa re ga sa ga re sa the re is there but it's just a flicker So the sa is the nyasa swara, or the swara on which it ends. Re ma ga sa, re pa ma ga re sa, pa ni sa re ma ga sa. Whereas this, the same melodic region, melodic area. Ni sa re ma pa ma ga re. You stop on the re. Re is a very important nyasa swara. Re ma ga re ga re sa ni. Ni sa re ma pa ni sa re do pa ga re re ga ni sa. re ma pa do ma ga re so this nyasa swara is actually a very important um uh, consideration in handling the swaras in a raga so we will listen to a a composition in desh um desh is also associated with the um, monsoon there are many compositions in desh that describe the monsoon and this is also one such um it's it's it says the the woman in this uh, is describing the gathering clouds the lightning and the thunder and her desire to be with her beloved Oh uh-huh. 